All right, Tim. Why is DLSS 3.0 a prominent feature on top tier flagship NVIDIA cards? Why? I thought it was I thought it was a way for lower performing cards to artificially add FPS. If you're paying thousands for a 4090, why is DLSS 3 a selling point? Well, I think that's kind of our point, right? Sort of. I mean, obviously, NVIDIA is promoting it with their 4090 and 4080 because those are the only cards that support the tech. Mm -hmm. So it's not like they're choosing to promote it on high-end and not mid-range cards. It's just that the mid there's no mid-range cards. So they're kind of forced into promoting it with the 4090. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of part well, of what we said. Is yeah, our point's more... Well, sorry to jump in on you, but it's kind of not a super useful technology for the most part with a high-end card like a 4090 because, correct me if I'm wrong, we sort of found a window where if you're sort of 60 FPS and below, it's not super useful for most titles because it doesn't improve input latency, so it leads to sort of this weird effect. Mm -hmm. And then at 100 FPS, it's actually kind of cool because you have decent input there and it really smooths out frame rates. And then once you go beyond 100 FPS, certainly well beyond 100 FPS, it's like it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, I mean, I think the issue with the 4090, and it, you know, it's hard to call this an issue, <laughs> is that the 4090 runs a lot of games really fast. It's a high-class problem. So, you know, you, you're playing a game at 180 FPS, you don't really need DLSS 3. Mm -hmm. I think, though, that said, there are many scenarios where DLSS 3 will still benefit a 4090. I think Flight Simulator was one of those. For example, it is a CPU-limited game. Mm -hmm. You've got this 4090, and even if you're running it on a... 13900k mm -hmm. you're still probably only going to be running at fairly low frame rates it's not a high paced game so mm -hmm. again input latency isn't too much of a concern so dlss3 on a 4090 does make sense in a game that is very cpu limited like flight simulator a, a, a simulator that's or, yeah or, i'm just saying not a game people get very sensitive when you call it a game I mean, okay, but there's other, the, you know, whether or not you need DLSS 3 in a game like, I don't know, City Skylines or something is questionable. No, but definitely not. They're, those sort of CPU limited, non latency important games, you know, yeah. on a 4090, you, you're going to see some benefits there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, it is kind of a weird one because when we start getting like 40, 50 tier cards, I think we are going to see people relying on DLSS 3 to some degree to get playable frame rates. And I have question marks over how good that experience really will be if the baseline frame rate on those GPUs without DLSS 3 is only 30, 40 FPS. Like if you're trying to get hit 60 FPS with DLSS 3, the game is not going to feel very good. Yeah, because I don't beat around the bush, I'm just coming out right now and saying it's going to be next to useless. Yeah, I mean, if that's the performance tier of those cards, it's not going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be next to useless. I'm calling it out. People will get very upset with that. They'll argue with me. I'm not really here to argue about it. I'm just telling you that's my opinion. I've, I've said, I know the limitations of the technology. I've used it. I, I, I know where it's useful and where it's not useful. Uh, and I also know it's not. You wouldn't use it for multiplayer gaming anyway. Period. Really. No, I mean, it increases latency relative to running it with mm -hmm. Nvidia Reflex. So you just enable Reflex. So it's really, a, it's really a single player. Yeah, I mean, I've thing. sort of explained it as it's... Or a multiplayer, like, flight simulator type thing. Yeah, I see it as sort of, if you're buying a mid-range card, so not the 4050, which will run things too slow, and not a super high-end card that doesn't really need the tech, but mid-range. So mm -hmm. 4060 Ti, maybe, 4070, depends on the performance of those cards. If you're getting... It depends on the game and how latency-sensitive you are. But if you're getting, let's say, 100 FPS... You're getting maybe 80 FPS in some, you know, not particularly so, high. So let's say games. Cyberpunk, for example. Like a Cyberpunk, mm -hmm. you know, if you play, at, if you're getting 80 FPS, you turn DLSS three in Cyberpunk, it runs really well. Mm -hmm. Like it does genuinely, you know, it, it's, the artifacts aren't super noticeable. That game didn't have heaps of artifacts, you know, as many as some of the other games. Um, you know, if you've got a high refresh rate monitor, it looks smoother. You get better motion clarity. It does improve the experience, but again, it's it's limited to that sort of the mid range card. You're in a certain performance window, um, and you've got your high refresh rate display. So, so it's really high fidelity single player games where you're natively around the eighty to hundred FPS. That's where yeah. it's going to be of benefit. I think I said 100, 100 to one hundred and twenty FPS, but again, it depends sure. on. One hundred and twenty FPS is pretty good, though. Yeah, right. it, again, it depends on how latency sensitive you are. Personally, I was playing 
you know, starting out with 60 FPS in Cyberpunk, I found to be a little too slow. You know, you can do apples to apples comparisons where you turn it on or off and you can sort of see what it feels like. And that was me personally, I felt that's the baseline of 60 FPS getting up to around 100 to 120 FPS was a bit slow in terms of input. But then as, as soon as you start getting to, yeah, like 80, 100 FPS baseline and DLSS 3 spitting out 180 FPS or that sort of level of performance yeah, yeah. feels really this is, smooth. This is a tough one. It's going to be a depends because there's so many yeah. people that get really packed, very, very, very upset when we say stuff like 30 FPS is not playable. That's true. Like they get very yeah. up. So if you're so if you're the kind of person that's like, no, 30 FPS is very playable, the input at 30 FPS is fine, then I think DLSS 3 is going to be awesome. That's true. And it, it, the same for 60 FPS. So which is what you're saying about how latency sensitive you are. Yeah, that's true. But I think as well, it, you know, part of my, not really an issue, it's more just a concern in general is that yeah, if you're buying a new GPU and you're expecting the experience of 120 FPS, but what you're actually playing is 60 FPS with DLSS 3 pushing you to 120 FPS, it's not the same as real 120 FPS gaming. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, if you're if you are latency sensitive and you want the full benefit of 120 FPS by increasing, you know, increasing the smoothness, decreasing latency, DLSS 3 doesn't give you all of that. Mm-hmm. But then again, some you know, a lot of the time games are very playable at 60 FPS with you know the input latency is perfectly fine. And for those gamers, DLSS 3 with the baseline of 60 is <laughs> going to be fine. But for me personally, yeah. I do think there's a benefit to single player gaming at 120 FPS versus 60 FPS. The input latency is better, it's smoother, and DLSS 3 only gives you sort of half the benefit. So again, it's such a it's such a complicated discussion, yeah, and that's why my video on it was so long. Is because you have to kind of yeah, yeah, cover yeah. off all these points. Of- it's a personal thing. Like for me personally, sixty FPS input, even in a single player game, is horrible. I would prioritize the input latency over yep. the visuals. So in Cyberpunk, I would rather a native at least ninety FPS. That's my bare yep. minimum. The input below that is. It's a jarring, horrible experience for me. I don't like it all. And I know there's a lot of you guys in the comments who have said exactly the same thing. It's around 90 FPS where the input becomes bearable. Yeah, and I think that's that's kind of the discussion with DLSS 3, isn't it? It's kind mm-hmm. of like you have to decide what what do you tolerate to begin with? Mm-hmm. Like maybe it's 90 FPS. We've seen comments of people saying 30, as you yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, we have 30 which is fine. So or 40. That's, that's a discussion. There. You'll need a GPU that can do that that minimum level for you. And then it kind of provides this nice bonus for you. It does, yeah. It, it kind of it's it's a good bonus. You get it, it's not like it's saying things, it's making things worse at that level. It certainly does mm-hmm. improve it. But again, you need to just figure out what's that baseline for you, and then expect a bonus. Which so I if, think if it's thirty, you've got a big window of how, of its usefulness. Yeah. If it's me, where it's ninety, but then once you get to one twenty, it's like eh, you've got that tight window of about thirty fps where you you could it could be a useful thing. Yeah, and I think there's going to be, you know, it's not like, again, if you're running at 120 FPS to begin with and you use DLSS 3 that's not doing anything or making it worse. Yeah, but I'd be playing multiplayer, so you wouldn't Yeah, use that's it, right. So. <laughs> I, th- I think some of the, the bigger concerns with it is more like, you know, trying to make it work with frame limiters and VSync because a lot of people don't have high refresh rate, significantly high refresh rate displays. Mm-hmm. Like 240 hertz isn't common, so to get the re- full benefits without tearing and stuff, they're going to need to work on those sorts of features. Again, I haven't really done too much DLSS 3 investigation since the initial video, so I'm not sure whether they've, maybe they've improved those sorts of things since then. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting to see the sort of feedback from that. I, I, I didn't want it to come across in the video like DLSS 3 is a terrible feature that's not worth using in any circumstance. It's just, it's more niche in terms of its usefulness than DLSS 2. So again, when it comes mm. back to this question, it's like, the nicheness in terms of the GPUs where it's going to matter, in my opinion, is going to be the mid-range products Mm -hmm. with the low end and the high end being less relevant. But again, we'll have to wait and see where the performance lies for those cards and, yeah, that sort of thing. All righty, going to hit pause there on the part one of our Q&A session for December. Good stuff. And there'll be more to come with part two and part three. And my voice will not improve for those ones, (laughs) so you'll just have to bear with me. But anyway, thanks to everyone who asked questions, upvoted questions, did all of that sort of stuff, and hopefully you guys enjoyed our answers. Yep. 
Also, if you want to support the channel, we do have our Patreon and floodplain accounts. Links to those are in the description. You'll gain access to things like our monthly live stream, which I guess you'll have to wait until January for the next monthly live stream by the time this comes out, but those are always a bit of fun. We've got our Discord community. If you want to come and join the chat, I'm, I'm sure there'll be plenty of stuff happening over CES as well to chat about in there. Mm -hmm. BTS videos, all sorts of good stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty much the end of this one. I'm your host, Tim. I'm your host, Dave. We'll see you in the next one.